Chapter Three. Inside the tent, a man was handing a glass of water to a red-faced woman. A boy was standing next to the woman's chair. Do you feel better, Mom? The boy asked. Much better, Ronnie. His mother said. Thank you, Doctor Fleming. The man said, looking down at the pack of pencils over the pocket on his white jacket. She stood up. Come on, Ronnie. Let's get some lemonade. She said to her son. Thanks again, Doctor Fleming. No problem, the doctor said. He glanced up at Mister Hathaway and the three kids. Who's the patient? He asked. Me, Dink said. The doctor pointed to folding chairs. Take a seat, please. There were no other chairs in the tent. We'll wait outside, Mister Hathaway said. He guided Josh and Rudolph to the tent. Up. Be a brave man, Dink. Josh teased. Dink stuck his tongue out at Josh, then sat down. Your name is Dink, the doctor asked. He pulled his two thin rubber gloves from a box and slipped them onto his hand. Dink nodded. It's a nickname, he said. My real name is Donald David Dink. The doctor sat in the chair opposite Dink. He touched a small bump on Dink's forehead. How did this happen? He asked. Dink told the doctor how he fell off. The carousel and showed him the red grape on his arm. Does it hurt? The doctor asked. Think not. A little, especially when I put this. Don't twist it, the doctor said. Just then, a police officer stuck his head inside the tent. Excuse me, Bob. The officer said. Do you see anyone run by your tent a few minutes ago? Nope. I was pretty busy. Doctor Fleming said. What's the problem? Someone grabbed the envelope with the diamond pendant. The officer said. The perp took off in the crowd. Oh no! I hope you catch him. The doctor said. Don't worry, we will. The cop said. Mister Miss Wing might be able to identify the thief, but we're stopping everyone at. Gate, and they next to gate. After the police officer left, the doctor turned back to them. Here's what we're gonna do, he said. I'll bandage your arm, and we will go to my office, and I'll X-ray you. The doctor pulled a steel bandage from a white cap. While I'm wrapping your arm, I want you to read that sign over there slowly. Think a little bit of sign. Why, my arms are. I mean, my eyes are okay," he said. The doctor opened the package. "I want to make sure you don't have a concussion." "Start reading," he said as he ra- began wrapping Dink's arm with the long bandage. Dink started reading. "How to avoid sunstroke." "One, always use sunblock." "Two, wear a hat." "Three, don't stay out in the sun too long." "Four, avoid strenuous exercise on hot days." "Five." Drink plenty of water. You're a great leader. Good le- leader, Dink. The doctor said. Finished with the wrapping. Wiggle your fingers for me. Dink wiggled his fingers and looked at it up. The bandage went from his wrist to his elbow. A small metal clip held the end of the bandage in place. Not too tight, is it? The doctor asked. No, but the bandage feels weird. They always do, the doctor said. Now we'll call your in your father. He is my friend's father, Dink explained. The doctor stepped over to the tent door and invited the others inside. Have their boo boo, Josh asked. Dink closed his eyes. I like to X-ray Dink's arm in my office, the doctor told Mr. Hathaway. Can you follow me to the hospital? Of course, Mr. Hathaway said. You want to leave leave right now? The sooner the better," the doctor told him, glancing at his watch. "My replacement will be here in a few minutes." The group left the tent and walked toward the main exit. Dink noticed an empty space between the pretzel pizza and the lemonade stand. Frank and his hot dog cart had vanished. At the exit, a line of people stood around mumbling. Two police officers were blocking the closed gate. The woman with yellow hair, who had been standing in front of Dink, was talking to one of the officers. Her face was pale, and she looked angry. I demand to be let out of this park, 
the woman said through clenched teeth. Please, you all have to wait. You will all have to stay here just a little while longer. The other officer explained. We need to wait for Miss Wick. Come on, follow me, the doctor said. He pulled his hand out on Dink's shoulder and guided him toward the front of the line. Hiya, Doc, the officer said. Dink recognized it as what as the one who had poked his head into the first aid tent. Hello, officer. Look, I have to get this patient to my officer proper, Doctor Fleming said, still on his head, hands resting on Dink's shoulder. He has a hurt arm and a possible concussion. No problem, Doc, the officer said. He nodded to his partner, who pushed the gate open. Thank you, Josh and Whispers. Her father and Dr. Fleming walked it through. And that is the end of chapter 3. Let's see you next time with chapter 4.